I mean, you started all this, you know, back in 2000, you suggested that Hillary Clinton run for political office, and she was then off and running for the Senate. And look what you brought. But how did she get into so much trouble that she is now only two points behind nationally, behind Bernie Sanders, when he started with virtually nothing and no national standing coming from the small state of Vermont? That's the problem of incumbency. If she had done nothing in her life, if she, if she was just screaming with high ideals of things that Bernie wants, that I want, that young people want, hey, that's easy to do. But when you're out there in the fight with the civil rights life, if you're out there in the fight protecting women's rights, when you're out there doing these things and trying to get something done, if you haven't done anything, there's very little criticism. So she's been on the front line all these years. But I really think your last story is what this is all about, filling that vacancy on the Supreme Court. That is really what is historic. We're not just talking about immigration rights. We're talking about voting rights. We're talking about election uh, laws as it relates to funding. This is such a historic part of the United States. And, and Bernie, to give him credit, he's got young people excited. It's true with old timers like me that he hasn't accomplished anything in the House or Senate, but he has accomplished something in the imagination of those people that were not around for the struggle and still have the hopes and the dreams for the future. And when this primary is over and when Hillary wins and they have to choose between Cruz, Trump and Hillary, I am so happy for the future of our great country. But Congressman, you say she, he hasn't accomplished much. He talks about ideals in a way that does appeal to young people. And perhaps the minimum wage argument captures the whole difference between the two of them because she was for 12 before she was for 15. Now she's trying to explain how she can be for $12 an hour and 15 in diff different parts of the country. He just puts it out there. I'm for $15, let's shoot the moon. You know, why not go for the higher number? He, he, he may not have the data points to support it, but it is very appealing to a broader group of people. If you're not concerned about the past and how lo long it took, even to think about talking about 12, even to talk about the recovery. We're not talking about uh, continued unemployment. We're talking about new jobs. We're talking about moving forward. Are we moving forward fast enough? Heck no. Is there anyone that's satisfied the way the economy is? I hope not. And so if you make an appeal to some kids that's got a college education, living with their parents, are looking for a job, and they're frustrated and annoyed, they got an argument. But that has nothing to do with people that have been looking. Look, black folks have been looking for justice in this country. We got Obama. Are we satisfied? Heck no. And if there's someone out there screaming, we should have another black president, I'm not saying don't scream. All I'm saying that realistically, we have to realize things have to be done. Even in the great state of New York, we got the $15 minimum wage, but upstate they don't get it, right? They get 12. Is that something to knock the uh, Governor Cuomo's political courage in doing it? I think not. If you're looking for something to be different about, there is plenty, no matter who is running for president. But we're seeing the end of the Republican Party as we know it, a party that has the Ku Klux Klan, has the Tea Party, the Freedom Party, and this used to be the party of Lincoln, and we've seen it fall apart. Look at the, the whole issue of campaign finance reform, the system that he's campaigning against. And George Clooney, who was raising money for Hillary Clinton and for the Democratic Party with his wife, Amal, this weekend. And look at what he said to Chuck Todd on Meet the Press. I've been a, a, a very big fan of hers. But I, I want to say this. Uh, I really like Bernie. I think his what he's saying in this election is important if you're a Democrat, again, to have these conversations. I hope he stays in for the entire election. And if he were to win the nomination, I will do whatever I can, including if, if asked a fundraiser like this again. You know, her negative ratings have gone up, so she is much less popular than she was by nine points in just the last month. Is that in part because of his very tough campaign and his tough advertising against her and against the way she has 
taken money from super PACs and her Goldman Sachs speeches and all the rest of it. Not only he, but Republicans in the House of Representatives, uh, Republicans ever since she's been first lady has been taking shots against her. But I tell you one thing, Clooney is 100% right. The funding is immoral, it's indecent, and it's wrong. And the whole idea that uh, Bernie's people are throwing real dollars in the street, I don't think makes the darn case. But if you're thinking for one minute, that Bernie's suggesting that Democratic candidates not take corporate money and she not take corporate money and just leave it to the Republicans to do it, that is stupid and doesn't make any sense. Get elected and reform the system, not scream at it. Let me ask you about an issue that's very close to home, which is the 9-11 uh, families who are arguing for the right to sue uh, Saudi Arabia and other countries if in relation to terror attacks and the damage and they claim that the classified 28 pages from the 2002 congressional report shows that the Saudis were in some way involved. Have you read those 28 pages, the classified I pages? have not. I started to and I asked them, I don't want to be confined to any secrecy and when they told me I would be sworn to secrecy, I said, heck no. The American people ought to know. Saudi Arabia gets a free ride. They were the only people allowed to leave this country after this great tragedy. And they're the only people that really have not ponied up in terms of our national security since then. Unless the president can come forward and give the American people some reason to believe that our national security is in jeopardy because this country that has funded the ISIS, funded these type of terrorist groups in the past, I think we should all come clean. I don't see any reason why those 28 pages should not be fully released. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.